Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at using external components in Fusion 360. So I put together this project here. It's just a piece of acrylic with three panel mounted components. So we got a feather, an OLED display, and a sensor. And really it's a, it's a fun way to look at how everything can be connected with the Stemma QT cable. But I put this together in Fusion 360, and although it's a simple design, I think it's a good exercise in how you can attach components and panel mount them uh, with sketches and joints. So that's what we're gonna do today. So I got this here, that's the demo. I also 3D printed the stand here. So the idea is that it's, it sets up right like this and it's just kind of there to, uh, to see the, uh, the sensor values. So here in Fusion 360, I have the pretty much one-to-one -one representation of it. You can see here we have components of the parts, right? And really without the components, like it's kind of difficult to visualize what this would look like. And uh, if you're doing like an enclosure, even more so, you definitely want to start using external components. Uh, so that's what kind of what I want to cover today, right? So using external components. So where do you get these parts, right? So I've been making a catalog of parts and I've been storing them in our GitHub repository. You can search for this. I also have a link in the description, Adafruit CAD parts. And the way to kind of browse through here is you can, of course, search through it, read through it. But the numbers here are, are pertaining to the product ID or the PID here. Every uh, component, every product from Adafruit has a PID, a product ID. In this case, it's 4741 for this OLED display. So if we wanted to find it here, you could type in 4741, 4741, and there it is, the OLED display. When you click on that, you have access to uh, these three, uh, all of the file types. You want to use the Fusion 360 file type. And then there's a download button right here. So you can click that and it'll download the source. Um, or if you uh, go to the product page, a lot of the times you have a learn guide for that product. And if we have uh, the learn guide, go to the download section and then you can get the PCB file or the 3D models, which will take you to the link that I was just in. So that's really cool. Uh, so that's how we can get the parts and that's where I'm like kind of storing them all, right? So hopping back over to Fusion 360, um, the way to bring them into Fusion is this, uh, in your data panel, you got an upload button. Um, you can select where you want to store it. So if you want to be a little bit tidy, you can uh, make a parts folder, for example, and store it in there and then bring it in. Um, so I'm going to you know, start from scratch, right? So I'm going to make a new design. And when you're doing external components, you really want to save your design. It can't be an entitled document. So I'm going to save this out. I got a little layer by layer tutorials folder. And this is the Feather OLED um, BME680. That's the sensor and then stand because it's a stand really. Um, okay, cool. The next thing I want to get folks into the habit of like storing their parts in a parts folder. So it's really important to make the folder before you start bringing in your parts. So um, I have a hotkey um, S, which is for bringing up shortcuts, and then you can type in anything you want here. So components, I want a new component. There you go. Let's name this uh, parts or electronics because that's mainly what it is. And then I can start bringing things in here. You notice that it automatically activated the component. You really want to have it active before you bring it in. So in your, uh, in your, in your data panel here, uh, search for where you uploaded your parts. In this case, I got my OLED display here somewhere, this one here. So before I bring it in, I want to kind of think about some things, right? So how do I want this model to be? Well, if we look at my original design, the front, you know, the front face of our model is also the front face of our view cube. I really like to have my models like be uh, relative to the view cube because I'm always orbiting it around it and the left should be the right and the right should be the right, back to the back, top to the bottom, that sort of thing. So I'm keeping that in mind when I bring my component in, I really need to be conscious of where it is relative to the view cube. So in this case, when I bring it in, Keep your eye on the front view and, and try to see like, is that where I am? Am I facing the front? Is the front of the display, you know, facing where it needs to? So I'm gonna bring it in by uh, right click, uh, insert into current design. And again, making sure that my electronics folder or my parts folder or my component is, uh, is activated. So I'll hit insert into current design. It is face down. It's face down. I'm looking at it from the front and, now I need, and it's not the same. Instead of hitting okay and then moving it around, Let's move it around first before we hit OK. So I'm going to use this uh, handle to prop it up 90 degrees. I'm still not facing the right way, so I'll have this other handle that I can rotate it around. Let's do another 180 degrees like that. Cool. Now looking at the front, it's now looking at the front. Neat. So now I can kind of move this around here. And um, 
to get a better idea of where I am relative to like the grid, let's look at the grid. And uh, you can right, you can click on this uh, little icon here, the grid icon, and click on layout grid. You can see here that's where I am. So I kind of want this to be up a little bit. Maybe move it this way here like that. It doesn't have to be perfectly put place, just so that it's like, you know, relative to our grid and our view cube. So that looks good. Now I'm going to hit OK. OK. <laughs> OK, OK. Next up, I'm going to add the feather. So again, make sure that my electronics folder is selected. Right click on that, enter it into current, docu into current design. It's a little bit better. It's propped up where we want, but I kind of want the USB port facing up. So I'm going to use this handle to rotate it 100, uh, 90 degrees and then the arrows to move it uh, to the left side here, to the right side, and then move it up a little bit. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of better. <laughs> Sorry about that. And then hit enter. Okay, so that's placed very well. And then uh, the next one, the last one is the BME. It, I got a lot of parts, so I'm going to use the search function under here. I already searched for it, BME. Fusion has like the last thing you typed in, but there it is. This is the BME sensor. Right click, insert into current uh, design. And this one is typically how my PCBs look. They're normally flat against the, uh, against the grid like that. So I'm going to prop this, prop this up similar to the display. I prop it up by 90 degrees. And then I'll use the arrows to manipulate and move it around. Now, in my design, I actually don't have it this way. I have it propped up this way because of the way I, I think the cabling is sorted out better and connects better uh, this way. So if we look at, I hit okay, by the way, because that's the, that's where I want it to be. Uh, if I, if I go back over to the overhead here, you can see, um, if the, if this was mounted, you know, you would have very, the cable would probably stress out. So I really like uh, having it in this position. I think, uh, it aesthetically looks better and it functionally, it works better like that. So that's the reason behind the, uh, the choice on, on that. So back over to fusion. Now we have our parts placed and we're ready to start creating our, our panel, whether it's acrylic or 3d printed, it doesn't matter. We're just going to start making it. So what I want to show is, uh, if you notice, I actually have this at an angle right here, right? So it's not flat. It's at an angle. And the, uh, the trick here is that I drew it as a profile to the side view like this. So if you look over to the overhead, you notice that that's that's kind of how I'm, I'm drawing it. I want to make it so that this whole panel is is able to pivot or adjust uh, to this bottom here. So that's what I wanted to do when I designed it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a profile of the panel already at an angle, and that way I can adjust the angle of degree here. So that's what we're going to do. So let's see how to do that, right? Back into Fusion. I'm going to make a new component in the right design, the blank one. And I need to make the component outside of the electronics folder. So I'm going to select the root of the document and then uh, create a new component. I'll bring up the design shortcuts window with the S key and type a new component. There it is. And then I'll name it to uh, the panel. Cool. So now I have it activated and I've created it. The next thing I want to do is, uh, why is that active? <laughs> that should be like that. That is super weird. All right, so with panel selected, I'll create a new sketch, but I'm gonna draw it here on the side panel. Not the front, but the side, like that. And the idea is to create the side profile of that acrylic, like we did here. So to do that, I'm gonna create some user parameters. Um, so that way we can adjust the, the length and the width of it. So the first thing I wanna do is like the thickness of the acrylic, of the panel. So I'm gonna type in thickness here for the name, and then I'll add three, because that's how thick my acrylic is. Next thing I'll do is uh, make the panel length. How long is it? I want it to be 110 millimeters long. And then how wide is it? Um, I want it to be panel uh, wide width. And then I'll make this like 90 degrees. Hit OK. That's really all we need right now. So hit OK. And I'll start drawing my, uh, my rectangle here. So I'm going to start with a line. And I want the line uh, to just kind of go straight out like that. OK? I hit the OK button there, and that's it. Next thing I'm going to do is make another line. And as I start drawing it, you'll see that I'll get this parallel icon here. Those two lines, those little two icons there that show up there, let me know that that is going to be a, uh, a parallel line. Now I'm going to do is, is, now with the second line, I actually want to make this connect, but I can't quite yet because I want to make this line perpendicular with the line that I'm connecting to. 
So you can see that it shows up there in the corner. So I'm just gonna click and then hit the escape key to exit the line tool. Now what I can do is I can select and then hold down the shift key and then select those two dots and then connect them together with a coincident constraint. So with the S key, I can uh, either type that in or have it saved here in my little window here. Uh, coincident, you just type it in, you can see it here and then I, you can add it with this icon here. Right now it's an X, uh, but when it's not there, you can add it like that. So that's coincident and that'll connect those two together. Excellent. Now we just need to create a line that connects these two dots together, right? So pretty similar, I'll uh, roll over onto that dot and that square lets me know it's gonna connect to it with a coincident. And then as I move around, you can see I can get the perpendicular constraint. Now I can't connect to it quite yet. So doing that same method, I'll just make sure that I get that perpendicular constraint, click, hit escape, select these two lines with the shift, they're both selected and then do a coincident. And now I have my rectangle here. So what's important about doing that is that it's already at an angle, right? And what I can do is um, add a, a thickness dimension uh, to this line here, because really that's the thickness, right? And you can see here as I move the, the, the cursor, it's going into different directions. I really want the direction to be uh, parallel with those lines, so right here. Now it's set to 11 point whatever, doesn't matter. I'm gonna put in the thickness value here, the user parameter and hit enter. And now that is set there. The last thing is I can pick one of these two lines. They're both the same. So I'm just going to click on, I just click on one of them and then add that dimension with the D key. And then for here, this is what's going to be our, our, our width, our panel width. And there you go. Excellent. So now what I want to do is I want to place this right into the center right here. And when I place that, that allows me uh, to uh, pivot this around, right? So that's what I want. I want that behavior there. So I have it there. And now it's locked in there with one of these constraints. So if I ever want to move it outside of that, I'd have to delete this constraint. But right now, actually, that's what I want. The next thing I want to do is I need a reference line so that I can apply a dimension, a, de a degree. So I'll make my line, and I'll start uh, from the center, make sure I click on that center, and then drag it out here, and then I'll hit uh, Escape. Now, the length of it doesn't really matter, but I want to add a length anyway. Let's go ahead and make it the, the width of the panel. And then what I want to do is select that line and hit the X key because that'll make it a construction line. So it won't intersect anything if we, if we make something there. All right. So now the last thing we can do to, to actually make this um, at the right angle is to select both of those lines and then hit the D key. And then you get this dimension for the degree. So here's where I'm going to put 70, right? Because 90 minus 30 is 70. And that's the degrees that I want to tilt it by, 30 degrees. So now I have that. So I'm gonna, that's pretty much the profile. That's all we need to do to make our acrylic at an angle. I'll hit Finish Sketch. And then uh, to extrude it, you can use the hotkey E. And because it's just a single square, rectangle, um, Fusion knows to select it automatically. So right here under Direction, I want that to be symmetric because we're going to start pulling it out. And then for the measurement, I want to change it from half length to the whole length. Now for the distance, I'm going to put um, the length of the panel, panel length, and then you can see here that uh, it's making that, that panel length. I'll hit OK. So now if we open up that uh, the folder and then look down into the sketch, you can right click on the sketch and say Show Dimensions. And this is so critical for me. A lot of the times I'm always showing the dimension because now I don't have to jump and edit the sketch, like to go into edit mode, because if I do that, well, my extrude disappears because I'm going back in time before I create an extrude. So it's cool to finish the sketch, modify your sketch after the fact, after, you know, in, in forward in time, in current time. So I can change the 70 to 45 and it updates that extrude right away. So if we have things attached to the surface, we should be able to move the parts as well along, uh, as well as the surface, because it'll be tied to it. So that's the idea that we're doing. Um, so now that's created, I am going to create a sketch on this surface, right on top of this panel. Okay, So with that selected, I'll create a new sketch. right? And now you'll notice that the grid is now flush with the surface. But my components are still in place there because I am now at this angle. And just for reference, let's, let's draw a rectangle, just a basic rectangle. Don't even add any dimensions to it. And hit Stop Sketch, right? Finish Sketch. 
Now, if I bring that, that, that first sketch open, you'll see the dimensions are still there. I can still modify it. Watch what happens when I make this like 45. The rectangle goes with it. This lets you know that, okay, my anything that I draw in the sketch will get updated um, whenever the extrude gets updated or whenever any of these sketches get updated, which is really nice. That's awesome. So now what I'm going to do with this rectangle is to use that rectangle and add circles to the corners because I need to create some circles, some holes in order for this, uh, for these, for these mounting holes on the PCB to get secured to the acrylic panel. I need to create these holes and we need to measure these holes. So I'm going to go into that rectangle I'm going to hide sketch one, just, just for sanity's sake. And I'm going to apply dimensions to, uh, to this line and to this line. And I'm not even going to ex whatever number is fine at this point, because we're going to edit them and hit finish sketch. Uh, similarly to the sketch number one, I'm going to right-click and say Show Dimensions. So now I can modify these dimensions without having to jump into the sketch. Now what I need to do is I need to measure these holes. I'm going to activate the main component, like the main root of the document. That way everything is not grayed out. And I'm going to use the measurement tool to measure the length, the distances between the mounting holes. The mounting holes are parallel, so that's that's helpful. So I'll do the first set from this hole to this hole, you know, across and then from this hole to this hole going down. So I need to measure those. So again, under the inspect, there's a measure tool. There's also a hotkey for that tool. It's the letter I. Think of inspect as I. So I want to inspect that hole. I'll click on this hole here, and then the second hole right there, and then you get this distance. We want to do distance and not minimum distance. We want the distance. So I'm going to double click on that, and by double clicking on that, that copies that value to your clipboard. And I'll hit escape key to get out of the measurement, and then I'm going to Double click on that sketch there, the, the, the dimension, and then just paste in what was in my clipboard. There you go. Now let's do the same thing, but for the, uh, the opposite end. So I'll do I again for measure. I'll measure this bottom hole to the top hole here. And then there, here's the distance. Double click. We'll copy it to your, to your clipboard, and then double click to change that, um, that sketch dimension paste. Hit Enter. So now we have um, a rectangle that is the exact measurements for the distance of our hole. So now I need to add the hole. So to add the hole, I actually do have to go back into the sketch. So I'll go back into the sketch. And before I add the holes, I'm going to double click on any of these lines and that'll select the whole rectangle. Now what I can do here is hit the X key and that way it'll create a construction line. So let me hit the hex key again and that'll bring it out of construction mode. And watch what happens when I add a circle. So I wanna add a circle to this corner and I wanna make sure that the, the icon turns into the square. That lets me know it's gonna be constrained to that. Um, coincidentally. So I'll make a thing. I didn't create my mounting hole user parameter yet. I really do want to create one. So right now I'm just going to put 3.2, hit enter, hit the, uh, the hotkey to bring up the user parameter and create a new one. So I'll call this one mounting hole. And I'll put 3.2 because that's the hole I want. And I hit OK. Now inside here, I will change this to uh, the mounting hole. Great. Now, if you look at when I select the circle, you'll see that that rectangle is intersecting it. Now, that's why I want to double click that line and hit the X key. That stops the uh, intersection from happening. I just need this to be referenced so I can create some sketches, the dimensions, not uh, actually cut anything away. So that's, that's what, what construction is for. Now, I have one hole. Instead of drawing three more, I can mirror this one hole. That way, if I want to change the hole, um, it'll just change for me. I, I only have to change it in one spot, right? I tend to like to do this. You could just add a hole here and then say uh, mounting hole, which you know what is probably easier. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just add holes here and say mounting hole. And then another one here at this corner. It's kind of hard to see, hide the electronics. And then uh, right here, hole, mounting hole. There you go. So there's your holes. Uh, I was going to mirror them, uh, but it, this is easier to do because it, it kind of is a little extra step. So now I have this, and I want to make this in the center of this panel forever. Whenever things change, I want this to always be in the center. And the way to do that was this construction lines. <laughs> so I'm going to pull one of these edges. I want this left edge from the panel. So I'll bring it in with the projection tool. Um, the hotkey for that is, is P or you can just type in the, the S key and then type in project, and that'll project that in, right? This here is telling you that you have a link to the projection, so you want that turned on. Um, that way, anytime the extrude updates, 
the the uh, this this edge will update as well. So just leave that checked, and if it's not checked, check it. So hit OK. It's a purple line that lets you know it is a projected edge. So now what I can do with this projected edge is create a line that is midpoint constraint. So as I roll over, I get the middle by seeing that there is a, a triangle. That is the icon for the midpoint constraint. So I click there, and I'm going to click and join to the midpoint of one of those edges right here, one of those lines here. So now I have a midpoint constraint. Now all I really want to do is make this line perfectly straight. And to do that is with a horizontal or vertical constraint. So that'll always be straight going across or straight going up and down. Same thing with this line. I want to select it, hit the X key. That way it doesn't uh, chop anything. Now that we have it constrained vertically, we need to constrain it. I mean, now that we have it constrained horizontally, we need to constrain it vertically. So same thing. Instead of projecting an edge, though, I can just use the bottom here. The bottom is already in the center because I've drew it in the center of our grid. So I can say I want a line here. It doesn't need to be midpoint. It just needs to coincidentally connect to that. But the next one needs to we needs to be a midpoint constraint. So right here, that's a midpoint constraint. And now, same thing that we did with the left with this line, we need to apply a, a horizontal vertical constraint to that. And now that is vertically constrained. You notice that everything is white now. That's fully constrained. So I can select this line, hit the X key, and now it is uh, it is now that. So all we have here is lines. <laughs> so I'll hit finish sketch. And yeah, let's play around with it. Let me uh, bring up the user parameter window. Watch what happens when I change the height. I'll change the 60. You can see here that it's now always in the center. Those holes will always remain in the center. Same thing with the length of the panel. If it changes to 50, it doesn't move because it's already in the center because of the way it was extruded, right? Uh, so I'll put this back to uh, 110, and then this one back to 90. And there we go. And the real fun thing is to change the angle in our sketch number one. So here, let's say 45. You can see that sketch is forever awesome, right? So now what we got to do at this point is attach our component, our display, to one of these mounting holes. So let's bring this back to 70, and then we'll hide sketch one. So even without making holes, you can attach the screen uh, to features in a sketch, like this one. So let's bring up the electronics. And the way to attach uh, this screen to that hole is with the joint under the symbol. There's a joint here. You can use the hotkey J. And what I want to do is to select the hole, the mounting hole in the back here, because this is actually the surface that we're going to mount to. So that hole to this hole. You want to keep it consistent, right? So there it is. You see here that it's perfectly flush with it. But in reality, we can't actually do that because there's components on the on the back of the PCB. So what we need to do is we need to offset it. And really, the offset is like how long is your um, is your standoffs? My standoffs are six millimeters long, and those can change, you know, eight, ten, twelve, however long you want them to be. But for mine, I'm going to make it six, and we can change that. We can make it use parameter as well. But I'm going to make it a hardcore value of six, hard coded, not hardcore. <laughs> So now we have it nicely offset there. And you can see here the uh, stemma connector, the capacitors and everything, plenty of clearances uh, for all those components. So now that that's locked in place, uh, you can you can play with it. You can, you can go 45 degrees and your screen will update with it. Put it back to 70, it updates with it. Let's go ahead and change the height of it. Go from uh, 90 to 70 and you see it's always in the center. That is really the whole uh, technique on how I built this project. I think just showing the display is enough to be like, okay, this is how to do it. So now you can apply that same thing, create a rectangle, measure your mounting holes, and then apply a joint to it. That's how I was able to create this, uh, this thing here. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. I want, I can run through the whole thing, but I think that's enough to share because I really wanted to step through the whole procedure uh, or at least the procedure of getting to this point, And then you can apply, the same techniques to the rest of the components. Um, at this point, it's like, well, where are my holes? Well, we can just hit extrude, select these holes. And one of the tricks I like to use is to say the extent to objects and then select the back of the thing. That way, if you ever change the thickness, it'll always change because it's always looking for the back surface as opposed to the front surface or a hard coded value. So now I got that, I can hide all the sketches. I can hide the joint too, because it looks messy. And then here's the holes. Here's the uh, the screen. So uh, I'll bring 
I'll bring uh There you go. So now that's looking better. There's still a joint I need to hide <laughs> right there. Oh, I accidentally added that to the timeline. Let's delete that. Cause I was wondering, I was like, why is my panel now inside my electronics? It's cause I somehow added it in, but there you go. And then you would make another component, sketch on top, create the standoffs if you want, add screws from McMaster car, do all that fun stuff. Um, so that is that is how I'm able to do this. I'm, as opposed to attaching your joints to a hole or a feature in your solid body, I find it really nice to attach it to a sketch. And, uh, and this is why, really. So hopefully that shows folks a good insight on how to work with external components and how to like position them with sketches and joints. All right, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are doing good, and I'll see you in the next one. But until then, remember to make a great day. Bye, folks.